Hello, friends. It's Chop. I want to share something. Chris, Chris, I want you to say it. Uh, we were, we, me, Virgil, and Chris were interviewed by some college or radio kids at uh, Iowa State, uh, in, or no, University of Iowa in Iowa City before our show. It was a great convo. And part of the conversation is they asked us all why we like Bernie. And me and, me and I gave a, like a ta- forward looking answer. Uh, Virgil gave one talking about like 2016. And then Chris said something that he found on, where was it? Uh, actually, this is not my quote, but it's actually Molly's, who is in the room. Molly! Can Molly! You, can you come over here for a second? So, uh, you, you know, Molly and I were Virgil hanging. and I are just so happy to have another girl on the <laughs> <laughs> uh, g- g- Give Molly a mic, yeah. Uh, Felix, can Molly use your mic? Yeah, yeah. Give So, Molly a mic. Uh, you know, we were up in the hotel room uh, packing up gear for the day and uh, yelling about politics like we do, and Molly told me uh, this thing that she, uh, she found on Caroline Calloway's Instagram page. Oh, Queen. my yeah. God. Queen. Oh, my God. Queen. Right. Well, so, first so, of all, so, so. I, I love Caroline. First of all, hi. Second of all, I love <laughs> Caroline Calloway. She's like an icon of our times, our modern times. <laughs> yes. And then yes. she surprised. I would have put her as a Warren bro, but she came out last week for Bernie, which, I mean, amazing. Like, that's mm-hmm. Queen shit right there. Yeah, yeah. And someone, of course, all of her fans are Warren people. And so there were a lot of people in the comments of the post where she endorsed Bernie being like, "Uh, I'm just curious, like, why you're interested in him. And the best response I saw, which was not from her, it was from another person that follows her, said that Bernie is the only candidate who doesn't leave anyone behind. Yeah. Yep. And I love that. Yes. And then yeah. I use that. Yes. That's, yeah. that's it's like the best, a perfect, easy way. It's the best one phrase explanation for Bernie that I have heard. Yeah. He's not fucking yeah. means testing you. They're not making sure that you had a good enough fucking SAT or that you've absorbed enough fucking correct cultural opinions. Uh, it is a rising tide. Yeah. Bernie is the rising tide. Yes. I mean, that it, will also envelop Pete Buttigieg and he will become the C. I, I met someone, I met somebody this week. They're in their 30s. They work more than I ever have. They work probably like 60 hours a fucking week. They're Felix, I've known you for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're a nurse's assistant. They drove here from fucking Albany. <gasps> All the way oh. from fucking Albany. Amazing. And he said, like, I listen to you guys. And I work. And that's what I do. And he came here. He didn't come here like what you hear from the pee people. I just like he gives me that Obama feeling. Uh, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't tell you uh, that same type of shit from the Warren people. He came here because he wants this to be a better world. I met so many fucking people, so many different types of people. I met fucking single parents. I met parents of adults. I met fucking. I met fucking dislocated nineteen-year-olds. I met people who I am supposed to believe we are all diametrically opposed. I met people that. Just by demographic, you tell me I'm supposed to fear them as some incel or mass shooter. And they all came here because they want the world to be better. There's no one like that. Yes. There's fucking nobody yes. like that. Yes. The That's Empire. it. They all came here to work together. And I was so fucking happy to see them. Uh, first off, can I just say I'm kind of shocked that the first reference to Caroline Calloway on the show was not made by me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I want to build on what Felix said here. You know, we have commanded you, our loyal bannerman, for months to go out and volunteer for Bernie. Make the Bernie journey to an early state. Make phone calls for the Bernie app that Robbie Mook designed. Send text messages. <laughs> not true. Not, not true. true. <laughs> and you heeded that call. You, we, 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 you know, called our banners and you came. We know for a fact substantial numbers of you were among the thousands who came to Iowa to ensure victory. We've met you. We you know cuz we've been out here too. You're real. And after this honestly pathetic attempt at a rat fuck, we know you are more dedicated than ever to ensure that Bernie will continue to win. Yep. Before Iowa, you were our bannerman. After Iowa, you are our blood riders. Watch another show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, this, this, no. this was on. Hang on. This was on. Okay. Uh, now Bernie didn't win. So Bernie won. You won. The media, the DNC, the Hillary fail brains, the rats tried to put a question mark on Bernie's victory, and you put an exclamation point on it. Yes. Bernie Sanders winning Iowa, something they deluded themselves into thinking was impossible as recently as last night. 
validates their greatest fear, that they are irrelevant, that they can try to cheat and lie and distort reality for a mass audience, and nobody will listen. They've spent years trying to kneecap Bernie, and they failed catastrophically. They are running scared. Their world is shattering, and yours is being born. I would just like to, to go on to go off that, and like you know, again, this this is, I, you know, I I, I I said this the other night at the the canvassing party, but it was like you know, as long as you've been doing this show, um, and like it, it started catching on, and people like you know on Twitter who are following be like, oh cool, I like your show, and I'm like, oh that that's cool, I'm I'm glad something I'm doing is enjoyed by other people, and then certainly when we started doing live shows, and then when we started touring the country doing this show, I've had the opportunity to meet people after shows or just walking around who just like come up to me and like the most common thing that, that anyone, any fan of the show who's ever introduced themselves or said hi to me has ever said to me is, I thought I was insane until I listened to your show. I thought I was the only one. You are the reason I'm here. You got me into politics. You, you got me into Bernie. You, you got me out of fucking like the, the death spiral of fucking liberalism. You made me feel that like, again, I wasn't the only one. And up until now, up until this week, I've always been immensely heartened and gratified to hear that from other people about something that I'm doing. It wasn't until this, in this week, like, you know, I'm humbled to hear that from other people. It wasn't until this week being here and like hearing that same thing that I realized how much, do, like how everything that you say to me or like about this, how much it, like, how much it is reflected back in how I feel and how much this show has meant to me and how much it's changed my life and make me feel that I'm not insane either. And it's just really, really underscored the fact that it's just like we are all doing the same thing and we are all the same because we all want the same fucking thing. And as Virgil alluded to, there may be as many as 2,000 people who came here from out of state to fucking canvas, knock on doors for Bernie, and fucking do this from every fucking walk of life imaginable. Of those numbers, I would say conservatively, probably several hundred of them were listeners of this show, which means that that is thousands of doors that have been knocked on in Iowa. Not because of us. Not, you listen to the show and we told you to do it and you did it. We did this for the same fucking reason. It's all the same fucking thing. And I think no matter what fucking happens... We should be immensely, immensely proud of that, of, of, what, of what all of us have done here this weekend. And not only that, what we are going to continue to do in New Hampshire and Nevada. Yar! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. No, but no, but, but, but seriously, though, like, uh, this is real. What we're doing is real. It's fun. I have a great time doing it. I still have a great time doing it. But uh, this this week being here and, and seeing it and how real it is has 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 filled my heart more than maybe it's ever been in my life. And I keep thinking back to the Adam Curtis interview that we did a long yes. time a long time ago. That it still remains one of our most like iconic episodes. And I have ever since then been very haunted by a thing he said at the very end of that episode, which is that you talk about like change or revolution or like changing the status quo, or like getting out of this trap, this, this hyper-normalized world of spectacle and illusion that we all live in, or, or, and then confronting the fact that there are people outside of that spectacle or illusion who have nothing to lose. And they're the ones who look like they may be winning because they have nothing to lose. The question he asked at the end of that episode is, do you really want what you claim to want? Do you really want change? Because if you do... And that, that there's a huge risk involved to yourself. And what I've finally resolved or come around, like in my own head, I was always haunted by that question because I, in my own heart of hearts, I didn't have an answer for it. I, it has been answered this weekend, this week in Iowa and last night. It has been answered for me. And the answer is we want it. Not me, though. I, uh, I was always aware I was willing to detonate the vest. <laughs> <laughs> No, but this is literally, I okay, but I'm going to take just a moment. Does anyone remember the old Tea Party yeah. movement? So I joined DSA Felix and I in Indiana. <laughs> you have those little hats. With the, with the I like the hats. Thing. <laughs> but I remember um, 
it was associated with also a big austerity mo- movement for a town in southern Indiana that I lived in that was a college town, but I did not go to college there. I had married a townie at age 23, and we both worked food service, which is hell because there's nothing shittier than serving students in an expensive college town when you're not a student. And um, we protested as, like, (laughs) members of Bloomington, Indiana, DSA, um, a Tea Party rally because it was associated with kind of austerity, which cut, like, the women's shelter by a third. It cut, like, the food bank by this and that. It was it was a huge fucking deal. Um, and there are, there's one picture of me online that people tend to find, and I have Doritos in my mouth because I'm extremely... <laughs> no, I you can find it. I'm wearing, like, a micro mini dress, and I have Doritos Don't in my tell mouth. tell our fans this. No, they, no, they will find it. They've already found it. I have a full mouth of Doritos. Um, but I remember walking around, and I remember seeing... Guys who were fully packed, and this sounds super dramatic, but like, you know, it's Indiana. People are carrying guns, big guns, lots of them. And they were holding signs that said, Better Dead Than Red. And we had um, signs that said, We were socialists. And, um, and I had this weird, semi self congratulatory, melodramatic moment where I was like, Oh shit, they want to kill me. And not in like a, you know, there's proud boys, they like wearing the same shirt kind of way, but like they had guns that they were walking around with. And these were like rural militia people. They're serious. And, you know, the militia movement is still so much more dangerous than like these kind of nerdy alt-right online right-wingers. And I thought for a second, I was like, well, but do I want to like put my life at risk for this? And I thought about it for like a good like 30 seconds in an overly warm southern Indiana swampy day. And I thought, yep, yep, I would, that's, this is worth it. And once you get that out of the way, you just keep going. And it doesn't matter if you fail, because you know you're going to fail more than you lose, because we're fighting something much bigger than us. We are going to fail more frequently than we lose. And whenever anyone asks me, what are Bernie's chances? I'm like, well, it's a small window, but it's the biggest small window we have ever had in our fucking lifetime. And it's getting bigger and bigger by the day. And I'm not even going to get shot for it. So (laughs) fuck it. I'm going to keep going. This is nothing like it was being counter-protesting tea partiers in fucking southern Indiana. It's, It's amazing. We have such a shot. We have a real fucking shot and there is this there is this one of these phrases that makes sense until you think about it for more than two seconds it's like well if you're not outraged you're not paying attention 